Diving Into the Wreck by Adrian Rich. First having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber, the absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask. I am having to do this not like Casto with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here alone. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we know who have used it. Otherwise, it is a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still the oxygen immerses me. The blue light, the clear atoms of our own human air. I go down, my flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First the air is blue, and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black, and I am blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here, swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs and besides you breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed. The thing I came for. The wreck and not the story of the wreck. The thing itself and not the myth. The drowned face always staring towards the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty, the ribs of disaster curving their assertion among the tentative ha haunters. This is the place, and I am here, the mermaid whose dark hair streams black, the merman in his armored body. We circle silently above the wreck, we dive into the hold. I am she, I am he, whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver, copper, vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels, half-wedged and left to rot. We are the half-destroyed instruments that once held to a course the water-eaten log, the fouled compass. We are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the ones who find our way back to this scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths, in which our names do not appear. So diving into the wreck is probably Adrian Rich's most famous poem. Um, in 1974, it won the National Book Award um, in which she accepted it on behalf of all women. And upon first read, you can tell it's a large extended metaphor about a speaker who is diving into the ocean to find a shipwreck. Um, and from the beginning, you can tell that she's choosing to dive into uncertainty. She talks about how her flippers and her mask make her feel awkward and uncomfortable, and yet she's choosing to explore that uncertainty anyway. Um, and so the shipwreck is believed to be a larger allusion to women's history, um, and through the ocean is the darkness, the depths, the uncertainty, um, which is contrasted which what, with what she calls the book of myths, um, which is essentially this unwritten code of misogynistic ideals, of sexism that prevails in society. And the ocean is where she can find the truth and the reality, but she has to put herself through discomfort in order to find discovery. And what's so interesting is you see an opposite um, relationship between truth and lies in imagery. Typically we see truth as the light, but in here the light, the brightness, the air that she feels as she's going down is the lies, the book of myths, these misogynistic ideals, and the truth lies in the darkness, the truth lies in the depths truth is under the ocean. So from the beginning, the speaker goes down. Um, she discusses how she's been told not to do things, how she feels awkward, and primarily how she feels 
alone. And there's that huge focus on individuality, um, which is really prominent in third wave feminism because it focuses on that individuality of identity and one's own identity and bringing that forward into feminism to show that feminism is, a, is something that affects real women and their daily lives and not some elusive mystical concept. Um, but even as she begins to dive, she still feels that sunlight on her and feels that deeply ingrained misogynistic values, almost internalized things that she still feels. As she says, I go down rung after rung and still the oxygen immerses me, the blue light, the clear atoms of human air. And there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin, which again emphasizes her being alone. Um, and then as we continue, she discusses, I have to learn to be alone. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power, which I think shows how for her, even though the ocean is uncertain, it's also a form of refuge. It feels safe when she's alone and she can quote, breathe differently down here, breathe safer. And then especially as we reach this point in the poem, the form and the structure are short lines in one long run on sentence. And when you're reading the poem, it feels like you're diving with the speaker. Um, and the run on sentences carry both an urgency, but also a kind of flowiness. And you feel like you're getting deeper and deeper into the layers with the author, with the speaker. Um, and then in the next stanza, she says, the words are purposes, the words are maps, um, which again references what she said in the previous stanza about the others who have lived here, showing how feminism builds on those and it builds on history and it follows those who came before her. But if words are maps, they can only go so far. A map can tell her where to go, but it can't give her the discovery that she needs. She needs to do it alone. And I think that also connects to feminism in waves because um, Adrian Rich grew up with that second wave feminism. But as you can see, she begins to come to her own and be, begin to feel that individuality of third wave feminism and the importance of that individual voice. And as she's describing the wreck, um, she talks about the damage worn by salt and she calls it the ribs of disaster which i thought was an interesting biblical allusion to eve being created from the ribs of adam um which then connects to the next stanza of i am here the mermaid whose dark hair streams of black the merman in his armored body i am she i am he and i think that with the ribs reference in the previous stanza. I think that shows how man and woman are connected and that is a huge, huge factor of third wave feminism. That idea of blurring the lines between gender norms and Adrian Rich throughout her poetry frequently references the ideal of androgyny, of blending the masculine and feminine and I love her use of I am she, I am he here because she does blend those and she makes them feel intertwined. And I think that a lot of feminism can feel exclusionary in a lot of ways, but this blend is very important and very characteristic of third wave feminism. And as she describes what she sees, she sees half wedged and left to rot. We are the half destroyed instruments, which I think that even with her description of damage, that half shows a little bit of hope still left. Um, and how even though things have been sunk in and things have been destroyed, they're, all, they're still half saved. Um, and she ends with, we are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way. Um, and I think that she ends the poem with a lot of hope. And now that she's seen it, she can begin to rewrite the book of myths that she references. And I think this, in a meta way, is her poetry. 
her new book, to rewrite the book of myths and write a book in which female names, women's voices do appear and undo that erasure and bring feminism into the spotlight. And I think that that's something that can only be done through poetry. Um, and Adrian Rich references that throughout her career, her own use of poetry and how poetry is in itself so deeply tied to her identity. And I think that too, the extended metaphor of water really ties well into this idea of feminism in waves. And you can see her diving deeper into the water and that the whole poem almost flows the way an ocean would. Um, and I think it really emphasizes how each wave is built on the last one. It gains the momentum from the last wave and they all come from the same ocean, the same depth of water that is the wreck Adrian Rich is diving into, that is feminist history and women's voices and what Adrian Rich describes as the female consciousness. This idea that we collectively as individuals can come together to create a female consciousness and she uses this hope. But since this poem was written in 1973, it still has a lot of those second wave ideas. But I found another poem by her um, in her book, Time's Power, and she writes, Finally, we will make change. This eye flash, this touch, handing the drenched flyers, these glances back at history, where swimming against the current will become no metaphor. This is how you land, unpurified, winded, shivering on the further shore, where there are only new kinds of tasks and old. Writing with others, that open letter or brief, that might, if only, we know it happens. No sudden revelation, but the slow turn of consciousness, while every day climbs on the back of the days before. No new day, only a list of days. No task you expect to see finished, but you can't hold back from a task. And I think that this work written 15 years after diving into the wreck builds on the very ideas she was creating. And she even references swimming against the current, not as a metaphor, which I think is a fun allusion back to her most famous poem. Um, and again, shows how feminism is ongoing. It is ever changing, but not changing, building and you get deeper so it's not so much growing it's diving into what we already have the wreck the uncertainty the misogyny the sexism dismantling it from within by identifying by being a woman by experiencing the masculine and the feminine um and i think this last poem more than anything shows Rich's growth over time and how she took those ideas of second wave feminism and forced into third wave and forced the momentum, forced the individuality, the intersectionality, the blend and the lines of masculine and feminism and especially her own sexuality being a lesbian poet and ends with hope, building hope, the turn of consciousness. Um, and you land unpurified, winded, shivering. You are weary. And she writes poems for the weary, but in the end, she ends with hope of more voices. And if one discovers feminist history and dives into their own wreck, they can use that voice through poetry to further feminism and female consciousness.